You've got uh, Flora Rudolph with us with the Elms out in Portland, Oregon. And myself here back in Prince Edward Island, Canada. And we're meeting together in this wonderful... She looks like she's in another world, doesn't she? She looks like she's stepping out into what some would consider, you know, the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's very very relevant seeing that it is Halloween or tomorrow's All Saints Day in Europe and <laughs> it's the time to open the open that door. <laughs> there we are. What is going on with the elms, Flora? And I have been with the elms a lot over the last week and it's just been um so such a wild little journey. Um Today, what's going on with the elms is they're just this conduit to these other realms. And I, it's like, whee! Um, last week, it was, they were taking me to these um, large understandings of being embodied mm -hmm. and being completely present and not in your um, trauma or your mind or any of that, but in a really powerful, visceral way. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, it was a journey into like sadness, overwhelming sadness for a couple of days. And then that's today. It's more like we can take you to all these realms of knowing and knowledge that are not usually accessed. Right. This is perfect for Halloween and for the um, myth of elms as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just, I'm going to get clarification here on a couple words just in case we have some. Some people that are, are like fresh with the English language. So embodiment means? Embodiment, <clears throat> excuse me, means being fully physical. Okay. And energy is, you have your energy all available to you. Mm -hmm. It's not often some thought process or some past trauma kind of thing, or it's tied up with some other um, glob of energy. <laughs> you have your energy for yourself. And you're here using it and it's pouring out of you and you're here, you're present, you're on this earth, energy's coming out of your eyes and your being. That's what embodiment means to me. Okay. So for, for somebody that's like, I was just reading something, they're like, oh, I'm still dealing with my shadow side and I'm dealing with my inner child side. That would be um, step of, of, of being embodied. It would mean what? It would be, it's not being embodied. It's being con connected to the past versus being embodied and present all here. Yeah, and it's also connected to this whole idea that you need to do that and that that's a process that's here for you. It's like a glob of energy. It's a glob of belief in my mind. It's an energy construction. Um, and okay. the embodied is to leave those constructions to the side, forget them for now, and just be here. Go into this other larger space that we all contain. Um, mm -hmm. People call it stillness or love or joy or peace or whatever. It's your, um, or your awakening. It's just, just step aside. It's here all the time. It's easy, actually. It seems like it's hard, but it's not. It's easy. <laughs> and the elms <clears throat> can help you do that. So cool. elms, right? They're this strong tree trunk like every other tree out there, pretty much, right? I mean, there's, they seem to be – the one you're standing by looks like how, how far around the trunk? Well, I'm sitting – leaning against this elm. Okay. And it actually comes through the back of my heart. And I can, you can do that with a tree if you don't feel like standing and hugging a tree. And I'm in a public park at a school. And I don't mind hugging, and I do it all the time. But today I'm just sitting leaning. Uh-huh. This tree is, I don't know, the diameter is probably um, 15 feet, 20 feet. Wow. Big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll sh let me just show you what's going on here with this tree. <laughs> it's amazing. Can you see this? Yes. It's just incredible. It looks like you'd want to just climb up there and sit. Yes, you do. And I think that's what people often did with elms or do with elms. It's like this, um, in mythology, mm -hmm. 
really fun to check the lore of different trees. Oh, hold on. You went, you've got to tilt again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> it goes elm trees. They're changing things. No. <laughs> In mythology um, and through history, elms have been this, like Virgil thought they lived in the underworld, that elms were found there. And that was his understanding of elms. And there's the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. Do you remember that? It's a lovely myth. And Orpheus meets his beloved and they are happy, happy. And then she dies. He's totally full of grief. An elm grove springs up around him. To uh -huh. And to give him a conduit to go to the underworld to find her and bring her back. He goes there and he screws it up essentially <clears throat> and he comes back without her and then he's lost her profoundly for the last time he's she's gone she cannot be retrieved and so he's so full of grief and he an elm tree springs up again and he sits there and processes his grief with this great nurturing elm tree so this is the elm and it's just got this profound subtle energy okay okay that um, can bring you to other states of being. And for me, this becomes, you know, being a Western girl, mm -hmm. becomes kind of a psychological thing. So you talk about the underworld. What is that? <clears throat> for, and um, traditionally, it's like the world of the dead or the world of spirits, which is great for Halloween right now. Right. But it's, um, so for me, the underworld is your own spirits, mm -hmm. which could be your own inner child too if you want to take it there, but you don't need to bring that in, but it's your own spirits, your own realms of being, okay. um, your own states, your own places to go. And it's bigger than that. It's mm -hmm. bigger than your own little, little psychological issues, which you don't really, in my opinion, you don't really need to mess with too much. You can just let it go. Um, but it goes into these realms of being where, you can access things that are typically beyond our normal exterior senses. Mm -hmm. Okay. And use like your more inner senses, your inner feeling, your hearing of messages right. and your, um, visions. Well, that, you know, what's really interesting about this is I just finished doing um, a, a talk with Bridget Murphy and she was talking about, opening your pathway to your guidance to the ancestors today. She felt like it was to talk about how to, that it's this time that we're going quiet within and we're connecting with the ancestors out there. Uh -huh. And then right after that, in between there, I saw another friend of mine doing a video from Poland and she was saying that tomorrow is a national holiday. It's all saints day. So everybody's in the graveyards today, cleaning off all the tombstones uh -huh. and, Tomorrow they'll go in and they'll light candles and they'll decorate them all with flowers and it will become a magical place of light coming in and honoring everybody that's passed away. And now you're talking about the elms and the under, well, you know, and reaching other levels of the spirit. There is something definitely going on and what the messages are, who knows, but I'm feeling that this is big. Yeah. It is big, and it's been going on for me for the last week in a really profound way. In fact, you and I have tried to do this talk several times, and it just has kind of slid away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it hasn't happened. But the information and the messages keep coming to me from Elm as I tune in. Mm -hmm. Like I say, it's a big, soft, um, more ephemeral energy, but it's very strong. Mm -hmm. It's not like you get there and, and you get knocked over with this, oh, do this. You know, it's not oh. that. It's a subtle but deep and profound energy, and it's really great. Um, the other Halloween, historically, yep. when people did this big transition from fall to winter, and really not knowing what was going to happen with the earth, if the sun was going to really come back and the crops were going to come back. Right. So going to this underworld for them it was this big transition to um you know all the darkness and so forth that would be coming and the barrenness and the quiet mm -hmm. um but it was also a time to really meet the spirits within and the spirits outside and they believed that they were really running around and that's why people put on costumes so that they couldn't would be invisible to the spirits Ah, that... well, otherwise you couldn't go outside because the spirits would get you. 
right? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes so it's sense. It's in our bones. We know all of this because it's just in our genetic history. It's in our in our thing, cells. But so this is all, I think, playing out right now at this time of the year because it's what we do as humans, what we've always done. So now does an elm tree, for instance, does it lose its leaves at a different speed than some of the other ones? Like, is it one of the last ones to lose its leaves or the first one? Is there anything like that in relationship? Did the leaves turn faster in color? Is there a discernible difference externally for those of us that are still in that vantage point versus feeling what the elm energy is like? I think that it seems to go kind of medium, medium to slow. Okay. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, be, uh, the last couple of years, I've lived with elm branches outside my windows and the leaves just whenever, you know, like up in a tree house almost. Um, right. elm, and they are just, the branches are so huge and powerful and sinuous. It's beautiful. It's like the most beautiful sculptures you can imagine. Right. And the leaves turn slowly. Um, yeah. So, and, and back to the original mythology. So did they end up comforting the the loss did they you know or did they embody the sadness that he could never get back uh, uh what's your name i was gonna say ophelia but that's not her name <laughs> um no they comforted him so that he could move on you know okay. um yeah so they help process grief if you're experiencing that or sadness or loss but they also, you don't have to have that to enjoy an elm by any means. I'm not experiencing that myself. Um, because they can take you to your other pieces of information and other states of being that are quite wonderful, which you normally don't even, you may not even realize you have access to. So um, the first time you encountered an elm, yeah. was it a, hey, you're different? <laughs> I was trying to tune into an elm energy, uh -huh. just very subtle, and I didn't pick up a lot. And I was moving kind of fast, and I just was walking down the street, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Portland has beautiful big elms everywhere. I hope everybody does has access to those. But um, so that was, but they were growing on me because they were so. They were there was a pull right. to learn more and to access more. So I have been doing that. I've been um, checking in with them, and this last week has been really amazing. Spending time with these beans so what would be the like the top maybe just the top one point but if there's three points that the elms would want us to know in communicating what they've been doing for us these thousands of years since the beginning of time since they came on this planet to us little like minute humans well, like all trees, no longer, they only, you know, they help process our air, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. But um, the main thing is they help, they just are here to assist in our growth of understanding different aspects of being, the whole cycle of life mm -hmm. um, and the letting go that's necessary for transformation. Their, their transformative energy is really about accessing these larger um, realms of being. It's what I call them. Mm -hmm. Worlds and worlds and worlds and worlds and worlds is what I was told. Um, and learning to open your senses in a bigger way so that you have a larger context for your life. That right. That yeah. And well, I, I mean, just to me, the, what a, a, a large tree for instance, yeah. has such an extension. I just came up with the Bridget. We're thinking the branches were like antennae, right? Uh -huh. And in that sense that they're reaching out and communicating consistently, right? And, and you know, we talk about taking in our, in the carbon dioxide and, you know, putting oxygen back in the air. But they, they just do this, right? They do this every day of their, their life of, that's just what they are. And how many of us have ever really thanked a tree for allowing us to breathe? Right. It's the breathing, but it's also the breathing in our emotional states and in our growth states. You know, they're here to help us, I believe, not just us, because we're not that, you know, 
we're one of the life forms here. Right. But they do help us with uh, releasing and processing our um, emotional states, especially our lower denser energies like grief or sadness, things like this, so that we can move into a larger state of being. Trees are amazing for this. They're just here. They do it. You just access them. You realize that these are alive beings here to work with you, to be your partner, you know? Um, so does that mean, like, if if someone's having some grief right now? Okay, we're talking about All Saints Day happening in, in Europe, and they're going, yes, I have these memories of my family member. They could go and spend time with the tree, and the tree will make them feel better. Yes. Yes. You Ooh, can that, just sounds, that just sounds so basic because there's trees everywhere. So there's, no, there's zero reason for anybody to ever be upset because the trees are there to help us. Yes, and you will be guided, I believe. I've found it in my own experience always, um, like every moment that I try, to that you just will be guided to the right tree. I mean, elms are a traditional conduit for helping with grief, as are beech. Okay. Beech are really good for sympathy and kindness and compassion and all of these elements. elements elms are such a big, powerful, grounded tree. They're like, I, I see them as like this big earth mama, you know, just okay. kind of holds you in and helps you, helps you process things. So really the, the way the sun is with the tree, it does look very much like a movie, you know, that you're about to just step out and there goes Flora and she disappears. <laughs> <in the water. laughs> <It's great>. <laughs> <laughs> I can trance out with these trees pretty fast because um, I've been doing it a lot. Um, yeah. So um, when you say trance, is that like you actually have like an out-of-body experience or you just are so at peace and connected that it's like you you know you have a body but you don't really feel like you have a body? I don't think about my body. I'm just uh -huh. energy field. Right. And, and do you blend with the I tree? I am embodied enough with it that I am just an energy field. It's, it's not like I'm concerned about my, you know, heart or my toes or my anything, you know. It's just like I'm here as this energy force with this tree as an energy force. So do you blend? Sometimes. Cool. Yeah. So how can people experience some of these beautiful things that you've experienced? You just start. Okay. You, first, you recognize that trees are this vital force uh, for transformation and mm -hmm. for your growth and for your own healing. Every tree has a healing aspect to it and a, he and a transformative aspect to it, I'm finding. Okay. Uh, and I'm writing a lot about that right now, each tree's transformative powers and magic. The, um, so you start, you recognize that that is going on, and you start tuning into the trees around you by simply approaching them, putting your hands on them, letting the energy field um, come in, let you, letting mm -hmm. yourself feel it. And you can do that through your senses. Mm -hmm. So you're touching them, you're smelling them, you're looking at them, you're watching the branches move. Right. That, and pretty fast, just watching the movement. And, and then just stay there and, and feel the energy of the earth in your feet, mm -hmm. groundedness there, and that you're part of this whole situation, this whole um, experience that's going on with this tree. Um, and so just stay with the tree for a while. You can also just sit back and lean against a tree. And it comes through the back of your heart chakra, the energy is pretty lovely now ask the tree mm -hmm. to um share its energy with you that you want to meet it you know that you really want to know what this tree is about and hear its messages so is that kind of like a you know just a natural like if i was to bump into you in the street i would say hi you know i'm jacqueline you're and say you are flora is is it really like we need to introduce ourselves to the tree, like in a sense of, hi, how are you? You know, here I am versus just, I'm going to come up and give you a big bear hug. 
Um, it's however you want to do it. However you're kind of guided to do it, I think. Um, sometimes it's like, thank you for calling me, is what I say, or hello, I'm so happy to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of just depends on how the moment is. Okay. I don't think there's anything you can do that's offensive. You know? Trees yeah. are a powerful force of energy. They're not, they have no mind. Which is just really amazing for us to get our, our minds around. You know? We, yeah, we have to kind of, in a sense, lose our mind to get present yeah. to that sense and come, as you say, like it's coming through the heart, the connection when you're sitting at the back, right? So there's this whole other vibration that's going on. So for, if if somebody, like obviously there's trees everywhere in the world, right? Or pretty much everywhere. You know, in some cases there there's desert. Um, there might be cactus. So if someone wanted to like learn more about the trees... They go to Tree Love Connect? Yes. Yes. So they'll find, you'll find Flora at, at treeloveconnect.com. And there are some great resources there. And, uh, but it's this, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be introducing trees because each one is different, not just like we know, I know oak, maple, elm, right? Birch, you know, but there's a whole personality in a sense, an energy about each one that is different that you're going to help share with us. Yes. It's very exciting. It's um, exciting because you have this whole like palette, mm -hmm. you know, as you get to know these trees and it's an adventure. I think I read that there were 81,000 species of trees. Really? Never ending, right? And then there's all the little mixes. I mean, you'll never know all the trees. So don't even really worry about that. Wow. <laughs> all the names and their this and that. That's kind of irrelevant. Um, I like to, I'm liking now to kind of get a sense of what they're called. <laughs> but it's the tree, you know, just like my name is George, doesn't really matter. Right. What's George like? It's like that. Yeah, I guess in in that sense of us naming 81,000 species, we're continuing that idea that everything is separate, yeah. right? Yeah. And when we give up the labels, we recognize this connection is just present. This energy is effervescent and omnipresent. Yes. Wow, this is like... This is cool. It's giving everybody an idea. If you haven't had a chance, if you happen to be in like the you know, the northern hemisphere where the leaves are actually turning colors and going to fall off the tree, do yourself a favor and get out there and get connected and feel what that feels like now is they're just letting go of everything. And maybe you can just symbolically let go of stuff that's bothering you at the same time. Are they okay with that? Oh, absolutely. That's what they do. They process our carbon dioxide and our emotions and our stuff. And I used to feel like, oh, I don't want to give them my stuff. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and they're like, give it to me, baby. Give it to me. Exactly. And they <laughs> just help you instantly sometimes just pull out of it or just release it and get another, another idea. You know, it's, uh, it's great. It's so like you have to be willing to receive, like, you know. Right. I was just saying, you have to be willing to receive. Oh, in yeah. the sense of, you have to be willing to let go, but you have to be able to willing to receive from the tree as you let go that everything is going to be. And I think that's that's what we're learning about now because these trees do this for us all the time. Yeah. Whether we're nice to them or not, or whether we even ever, ever notice that there's one in our backyard. Yeah. I think that's why people love to just take a little walk in the forest or in a park. Mm-hmm. That's a very, they're not even realizing the energies that are changing and transforming for them, but they come back feeling happier and lighter and more peaceful. Mm -hmm. It's because they've processed stuff. The trees have helped them process stuff. Yeah. You know? It makes, it makes such great sense. It feels right. And I, I am guessing that this idea that these tree roots have been there for millions of years in the sense and they've yep. been standing the test of time, just dealing with our crap, whatever we do to Mother Earth, with right. zero judgment, 
that maybe right. we might wake up and appreciate them and realize how much we really don't know. Exactly. I mean, like, yeah, exactly. And just how, I mean, there's so, we are so lucky to have these trees with all of their, they're just profound earth quality. They're just so connect. I mean, they are, they are connection. Right. You know, that's it. And they're right here for us and they're big and they're easy. And it's such an easy access to uh, transformation. And, and for those of you that are watching that have had issues like I have in the past of wanting to quiet your mind and do your mantras and meditations, et cetera, you, you can just be accepted by a tree, can't you? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the best. And you can just take your mantras and your meditation out there and then see if there's still something that you want to do after that or if they transform and change. They might change their form. Yeah. Okay. This is going to be a fun experience. So we're going to be back again next week, right? This afternoon? This afternoon, we're going to be talking about birch trees. The next one, is that what we're doing? I think so. I'll let you know when I get out there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And remember, you can find Flora at treeloveconnect.com. And she'd love to hear any of your comments, questions about the trees in your area and how you're connecting with them. And uh, just embrace this moment. Thank you, Elms. Thank you. I would love to hear your experience because like I've had three distinct experience with Elms, all very similar in, in feeling, totally the same feeling, but very different um, experiences. And I would love to hear what happens with you. All right. Mm-hmm.